table. Welcome back to Dave's Tech Table. Today we're going to talk about putting together a high-performance workstation. And to do this, you need to solve two basic problems. The first problem you need to solve is data speed, which is moving information from the computer's bus to the VRAM on the graphics card. If you think about how many gigabytes of information you need to move up and down the graphics card to process and display the graphics data, you'll get a better sense of why you need a powerful computer like this HP Z820. What makes the difference is support for things like the new Intel 602 chipset, PCI 3.0, and DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM. All of this results in much faster data transfers. Remember, products like After Effects spend most of their time just moving pixels around and moving them as efficiently as possible is part of the trick to get a high performance editing workstation. The second problem we need to solve is data processing speed. This is once the pixels are transferred. This is where a balanced CPU and GPU system play a huge part as they need to work together. This is one of the main reasons to consider a dual processor workstation. While the Intel Core i7 Extreme is an excellent processor and will satisfy many users, it's the efficiency of a dual processor system where you'll really see the difference. Let's take a closer look inside this HP 820 and I'll show you what I mean. So removing the outer cover, I'm going to go ahead and just show you a little bit how this system is put together. Everywhere you see a green tab is where you can grab and start to remove things. None of this requires any screws. So if I pull the hard drive out, this is my boot SSD, you see I'm able just to uh, put this in and out and not have any issues with, uh, with screws. I can also go in here and take a closer look at where we have the slots on the inside of the machine. Here you see I've got a Quadro 5000 board along with a Tesla C2075. Now, together, this is what makes up an NVIDIA Maximus system, and we're going to talk about that just a little later. Let me go ahead and remove the fan housing and give you a better idea of what's sitting beneath it. Here you see we've got two Intel processors. Remember, I talked about the importance of a dual processor system, and these are E5 class processors, very, very fast, liquid-cooled in this particular system. You'll also notice that we've got lots of room for RAM in here, up to 512 gigabytes of RAM, as a matter of fact. In here, I've got 32 gigabytes of RAM, which I think is a pretty respectable amount of RAM for a typical production premium system. Many people will go with 64 gigabytes of RAM, and the reason they might do that is it's a good rule of thumb when you have 32 threads, like this machine does, to have 2 gigs of RAM per thread. So in this particular system, I'm going to start out with 32 because that's what I typically use in my system. I'm going to go ahead and put this system back together. I'm going to actually remove the Tesla board because I want to show you sort of a good, better, best scenario as we start to add on more power and we'll benchmark some of that. So let me put this back together and we'll jump into Premiere Pro. So as you can see, the system's back on and I've removed the Tesla board. Let's take a closer look at what's actually in this machine. So let me just go to the computer here and bring up the properties. First thing you might notice is I've got a very decent Windows Experience Index of 7.6, 32 gigs of RAM as I mentioned before, but what you really want to look at are the dual Intel uh, E5 processors that are in here. And if I bring up another window, my task manager window, you'll see I've got 32 threads uh, working for me in this production system. So this is a very, very good system. And now what I want to concentrate on, now that I've got the system set up, I've talked about CPUs, let's talk a little bit more about GPU power. So if I bring up a program like Premiere Pro, what exactly is this going to do for me? Say you start off with a system with a Quadro 2000 board. What's beautiful about the Maximus system is you can start with an inexpensive card like the 2000 board and at any time add a Tesla card. So if you add this card to your system, you've actually got both of these cards in here. Now what Premiere will do is actually use the card with more cores and more memory. In this case, Premiere is going to end up using the C2075 card. So again, you can start with this and end up with this. It's excellent. Anytime you want to go ahead and upgrade your card. You can remove this card and maybe put in a 4,000 card. It's really a very flexible system. 
So Premiere Pro, when you go over to your project settings and you look at your renderer here, it's automatically gonna see the GPU engine. Remember, it's automatically gonna use that Tesla board. Products like After Effects work a bit different, so I'm gonna spend most of this demo and speed differences talking about After Effects, but I just wanted to point out that Premiere Pro will use the Tesla board, it just won't use the Quadra 2000 or 4000 or 5000 together with the Tesla board. So I'm gonna jump into After Effects. And let's open up a project and take a closer look at what's actually there. So I'll start off with a typical graphic. Now before I get into play anything on the timeline, I'm going to go to my preferences and take a look at my previews. You'll notice there's a GPU information here. When I click on this, this is gonna tell me what After Effects is seeing right now. And as I mentioned before, I've removed the Tesla card, so the only thing it sees right now is the Quadro 5000 card. So just to get a little bit of sense to this, I'm gonna turn off the GPU for ray tracing and just show you why we're even bothering to talk about GPU. And this is not really a realistic way to work, but again, I'm just making a point. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start to play some of this out. So as you can see, it's working as hard as it can work just to process one frame. This is what the CPU is actually doing. And again, this is not really the way you would use After Effects when you're in a ray trace 3D environment. You would always use GPU. But again, I just wanted to make a point. So let me go back over to my preferences, previews, go back to GPU and tell it to force everything on the GPU. Once I click OK, you'll notice I get a completely different experience. As soon as I come down here, I'm actually able to move this around. I can hit the space bar to preview, and you're actually seeing very, very decent performance coming out of this machine. And you'll notice that this particular one is actually rendering and, and auto-rendering at a third resolution, but it still looks great. Another very critical area that you need to look at is drive speed. This is an area that people often overlook. And when I listen to people talk about their systems, I'm always kind of listening for the balance of CPU and GPU, of course, as we said, but also drive speed. I'm going to use an industry test like this Blackmagic speed test, which is what I typically use to test the speed of my systems. Let's go ahead and select my target drive, which is my internal RAID, which consists of four standard 600 gigabyte drives and I'll go ahead and hit start. And you'll see when it starts to do the right test, I'm getting over 735 megs per second. And you see on the read test, I'm getting even higher data rates, 752. Now in order to get higher speeds than this, you could always put in something like an Intel SSD. There are 320 series I've been using for a while and they're incredibly fast. So make sure you tune your system along with the high speed drives. I recommend a minimum of two, four if you can fit it in your system like the HP 820. Let's go ahead and install the Tesla board and show you some extreme performance. Okay, so now I've installed the Tesla board back in the system and I'm gonna bring up the NVIDIA utility to sort of show us what's in the machine. So I'm gonna go down to system information over here. I'll click on that. And the first thing you'll notice is it shows me the Quadro 5000 board plus the Tesla 2075. Again, this is what makes up an NVIDIA Maximus system. So this machine's ready to go. So let me jump back over into After Effects and take a look at what After Effects actually sees. So I'm gonna to go to my preferences, and the first thing I wanna do is delete my media cache to make sure that I'm starting this test fairly. And the next thing I'll do is I'll go back up here to my previews and I'll click on GPU information, and you'll notice if you look right here, it shows that After Effects is actually using the Tesla board and the 5000 board. So you can even upgrade your system with a card like a Quadro 6000 card, which has six gigs of RAM. And we already know that the Tesla has six gigs of RAM. That way After Effects will have two cards with six gigs of RAM each. So it's important to understand how these cards work in tandem. So for this particular demonstration, since I've got the Quadro 5000, as I've said, each card is gonna use a maximum of 2.5 gigs of RAM. So let's take a closer look at After Effects and see how some of this works. Now I've cleared out my cache and I'm ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put this 
on full preview before it was on auto when you saw it was sort of going down to a third resolution. Now I'm just going to go in and grab this time marker and start to move this around. And you'll instantly know it's pretty fluid. You'll see that. This is an incredible way to work. I can go ahead and start to render this out. And again, this is ray tracing at full resolution. It looks really, really good. And this is the main reason people would jump to a Maximus system. Again, this Quadro and Tesla system working together. It is a great way to work in After Effects and really gives you amazing results. Now, what I want to do now is I'm going to bring up a different project. Let me go ahead and close this one down and bring up a project that's a little bit more complex. It's got a complex background, and you see it's got lots of different things going on here with different fill lights and backlightings and cameras. So what I want to do in this particular instance is I want to go ahead and start to render some of this out. So what I'm going to do is we'll, we'll do a couple of different things here. I'm going to remove the cart once again, and we'll have two different sides of the screen where we're going to show you the Quadro 5000 and then the Maximus system working with the Quadro and Tesla system so you can sort of see a comparison on how these things will render. So check this out. So now that our tests are done, you can see, and I just want to point this out again, that we were at full resolution here when we were running these tests. Typically, you might be at auto resolution, which will really speed things up a lot while you're working, but I wanted to show you the full power of the Maximus system when we're testing this out. As you can see from the test results, the Quadro 5000 card by itself gave us a render time of 10 minutes and 15 seconds, while the Maximus system, Quadro 5000 plus Tesla 2075, gave us a shocking result of 5 minutes and 10 seconds, cutting that directly in half. And you can see why there's a big value in having a balanced system. So this is Dave from Dave Tech Table. We'll see you next time.